My guest today, Nancy Mentesina, is Director of Advisory and Design Operations for Argyle. Nancy lives and works in New York City. I've known Nancy for quite some time. She's been involved with proxy design for as long as anyone I know, and she's one of my favorites. She's very creative, which is refreshing, a refreshing change for a profession where most of us get our creativity blunted out of us. I'm Brock Romanak, today on Zippy Point. So Nancy, shareholder engagement disclosure. This disclosure has been happening now for four or five years. Another disclosure that's not required by the SEC rules and regulations, but I think it's important that companies tell shareholders what their engagement practices are because shareholders, you know, at least some of them want to know what's that, what that's all about. So what have you seen in your travels with, with this type of, type of disclosure? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I and, mean, and shareholders also want to know that when they engage with you, they're being heard. Um, and that's probably one of the, the most evolving themes that we're seeing right now. So robust engagement with all shareholders, um, including those with passive strategies, is really essential. A well-defined engagement strategy uh, and history of listening to shareholders is seen as a hallmark of an engaged board. It also builds a relationship of earned trust that may be helpful if the company needs their support in the future for, for any number of reasons. The most effective disclosures clearly identify the company and the board leaders involved in the engagement program and what the company has heard or done in response to prior engagements. So we have a few examples to share with you here today. Okay, so starting off here with ConocoPhillips, who has traditionally had, had very strong disclosures in this space. They start out the conversation with the principle that engagement is the responsibility of the entire board. Thus, they have the board-driven stockholder engagement process. So down here, bottom of the page, you can see that outlined in great detail. Okay, so on the next page here, they have a section that goes into detail on the board responsiveness. Um, to lead the comprehensive year-round stockholder engagement program, the management and internal SMEs, mm, sorry, that's wrong. So to lead this comprehensive year-round stockholder engagement program, they have also identified an employee governance leadership team, which is comprised of management and internal SMEs on a broad variety of subjects, including strategy, governance, compensation, compliance, human capital management, and environmental and social issues. They finish off their disclosure with what themes they heard from their engagements and the changes that were made in response to what they heard. Regardless what various institutional investors are most interested in seeing is that their voices are heard and that they are playing an effective role in enhancing the company's governance and compensation practices. So another company that has had noteworthy disclosure in this space is Cognizant. So in their section titled Beyond the Boardroom, they include the parties involved in the engagement, the topics discussed, as well as the feedback and how it's integrated into the 2020 planning. So on this next page, we see there is a section here that is rarely included in proxy statements, and that is the one-on-one -on -one employee engagement. At Cognizant, where nearly two-thirds of their workforce is located across the globe, this is a key priority for them. This engagement goes beyond the annual employee survey and discusses the efforts to build strong relationships with managers that are on the ground with the large volume of their workforce. You can also see from Cognizant's approach that it is a highly engaging visual presentation. The next example we have here is PepsiCo. So as usual, PepsiCo has very strong disclosure in this space and spend much time throughout the year engaging with their stakeholders. 
in their own words, we believe that regular transparent communication with our shareholders and other stakeholders is essential to PepsiCo's long-term success. And at Argyle, we could not agree more. One of the things that we like in particular about this disclosure is they break down their conversations by topic in governance, sustainability, and compensation. So within each of these sections, there's highlights, updates, and changes that have been implemented, implemented in response to shareholders. So as you can see from these examples, stakeholder engagement has evolved from the four quadrant graphic with the seasons to a more robust conversation emphasizing the importance of shareholder and stakeholder feedback. We hope this continues to be a cornerstone of good disclosure in 2021 and that groups continually consider how they can absorb and respond to feedback as well as communicate what that feedback is most effectively. Yeah, those are all great proxies. It's funny that you mentioned the one-on-one -on -one meeting that Cognizant discloses because I actually mentioned that practice I've seen a few other companies do that, that, disclose that they do it. Some companies might be doing it and not disclosing it. But in my board meetings uh, disclosure uh, video, I discussed that. And my favorite part of the Cognizant proxy when you go to the HTML online version is that every time you click a page, it makes a little swoosh sound, <laughs> which is funny. I'm, I'm very noise adverse. I, like I watch sometimes TV with the volume completely muted, <laughs> just read the captionings. And you know, I don't have all the bells and whistles. I have my phone completely silent do not disturb, but something about that swooshing sign that uh, Cognizance Proxy, I, I just love it. If you Thanks very much, Nancy. If you click a little faster, the sound changes a little bit. It's actually very oh, fun. Hey, <laughs> hot tip, hot tip. Check it out. Check it out. <laughs> Thank you, Brock.